This one is more interesting because you are getting closer to estimating depth from the type of videos that you find online. It, you are not there yet, but you are, then, you are getting really close to solving that problem. And then you're gonna have plenty of videos on the internet that your neural network can be trained on in an unsupervised learning fashion. And then you have two objectives here. It's not only about a single objective anymore. One of them is estimating your depth. And the other one is locating yourself. Ego motion is about locating yourself and knowing what locating the other objects perhaps in front of you and so on. And this is useful knowing where you are and where the other objects are. This is useful when it comes to self-driving car or when it comes to robots. We as humans are really good at doing that and we want our robots to be good at doing that also. What is the difference between this paper and the previous one is that here you're also gonna work with pairs of images or actually a sequence of images to train your algorithm. But once it is trained, like before, you just take an image and then you're gonna report the depth. And what is different from the previous one is that these images or pairs of images or triplets of images, they are spaced in time. They are not images from two cameras. They're just images from a video, consecutive frames of a video. And in that sense, it is more relaxed in the sense that you don't need to know where, you don't need to have two cameras to work with. You can only work with a single camera. So these two figures, I just want them to be there. Don't worry too much about them yet. I'm gonna use them as we go through the math. The idea is you want to do your supervision along the time slices. These are the supervisory signals for you. You don't want to supervise your neural network by knowing the ground truth, ground truth depths. You're gonna have a sequence of training images or a training image sequence. And that sequence could have as low as three frames in it. The current frame, the frame from the previous time step, and the frame from the next time step. So N could be three. You pick a target view, maybe this is your target view for which you want to predict the depth. And then you are gonna have some source views, maybe the view from the pre previous time step and the view from the next time steps are two sources. And these have to be different from the target that you chose. So these are different images. One of them is source, the other one is target. What you're doing is you take your source image, maybe the image from the previous time step, you warp it so that you can align it with the target image. And as you can do that, you're gonna be able to compare them. You're gonna be able to compare them pixel wise over your pixels. So P is gonna index your pixels. And then you're gonna be able to uh, do it per multiple sources maybe the previous time step, the time step after, or two time steps next and two time steps before. Now, the only unknown term in this view synthesis objective is how are you gonna warp your images? And as I mentioned, IS is your source, source image warped towards the target image. And you're gonna do it according to some rendering module. And you want that rendering module to be differentiable because you want to do backpropagation and training. So you're gonna design a differentiable depth image-based rendering module. What do you do? You pick a coordinate, maybe this coordinate here in your target image. This is a pixel value, maybe pixel 22. You know what camera you're using to film the, the scene. So you know what is the focal length, for instance. So these are the intrinsics of your environment. You know your depth, or at least you can query your neural network to give you a depth, which initially is gonna be wrong. And that's the whole purpose of doing training. So this is gonna be initially wrong, but at least you can query your neural network to give you a depth. You're gonna have another neural network that's gonna take these sequences of images as input, and it's gonna tell you how you should transform. For instance, what is the movement of your camera? What is the pose of your camera? How are you rotating your camera from one frame to the next frame? What is the location of it? How did you translate your camera? So that's what the other neural network is outputting. And then you take back your K. Okay, and then it's gonna give you a point in your source image. So what is the idea here? And this framework is gonna work the best 
if you are filming a static scene and all you are moving is your camera and then your question the question that you're answering is the image that i'm filming with my camera with this angle how will it look like in the next time frame and i know that how i'm moving your camera or actually i want to estimate that so let's write down a little bit more math and then it's going to become clear so pt is the pixel location in the target view you have some camera intrinsic matrix so this is going to be a matrix it's going to be two by two p is a vector it's two by one k is two by two your depth you know it it's coming out of your neural network you have another neural network that's going to say what is going to be the camera pose from one frame to the next frame from the target to the source and then there is going to be some differentiable bilinear sampling mechanism so don't worry about this yet what we just did with ps we projected the location of a pixel in the target image into a location on the source image after these operations where is this pixel going to end up in the source image that we just did but then this ps there is no guarantee for it to end up on a grid it could end up being a real number or real vector 2d vector you could end up somewhere in between your pixels what you're going to do now is you're going to do this differentiable upsampling because you are not interested in the value of your image here you're interested in the value of your image at the pixel locations at these integer values so what you're going to do is you're going to do an interpolation it's bilinear interpolation of these four nearby pixels of the source image on this location so these four pixels are going to give you the value that you're going to put here and this is differentiable and where else did we see it before we saw it when we were doing uh, spatial transformer networks this bilinear sampling mechanism now what did just happen now you have a warp image which should which uh, should be able to be comparable to the original image to the target one so this is your source image warped in the space of the target image any questions so far so the question is about the camera matrix you're talking about k capital k am i right it has to do with the internal properties of the camera that you have what is your focal length of that camera and some other properties and the only thing that is hindering this method to be able to applicable to be applicable to real world images on the internet or real world videos on the internet is that you need to know your camera and then in the next slide we are going to relax that okay okay perfect and i mentioned there are some limitations here you are assuming that the scene is static and your objects are not moving from one scene to the next one which is definitely not correct as an assumption the other assumption that you're making is that there are no occlusions or disocclusions between the target view and the source views and then the other one is there is some sort of photo consistency and then the fact that this photo consistency metric that you're writing here makes sense maybe the lighting didn't change or which are not correct assumptions one idea is to go ahead and model all of those details which is impractical another thing is to relax your objective function rather than it being a summation and giving equal weights to every single pixel and every single source view let's put a weight let it be a weighted sum of differences absolute differences and then this weight is trying to model these uh, limitations maybe at some parts of the scene your model is not doing a good job because there are some objects moving according to those pixels some of the pixels are not going to be accurate so you're going to automatically downweight them but there is a catch here so this is an explainability prediction network so you can just think of it as weighting your differences weighting your loss function there is a catch if you optimize that loss there is a trivial solution and you don't want that to happen so you're going to regularize this neural network so here is a question for you how many neural networks do we have so far to train this algorithm how many neural networks do we have and training simultaneously any answers yes perfect so you have three neural networks that you're training simultaneously one is your depth estimator the other one is giving you these transformation matrices which are just rotation and translation matrices how did your camera rotate and translate it 
So one is for depth, one is this pulse neuron network, and the other one is this neuron network here, which is weighting your loss function per pixel and per source view. So it's a function of the source and the pixel. But then if you optimize this, you're gonna have a trivial solution, which is setting the S to be zero. It's gonna minimize your loss function. We don't want that to happen. So you're gonna encourage non-zero predictions. And how do you do it? You're gonna put a cross entropy loss on ES so that you're constraining your numbers. So that they're from zero to one. And then uh, you are trying to get as close as possible to one. So you want your numbers to be close to one and fluctuate around that. So this neural network is gonna fluctuate around the one. What else? There is also a L1 penalty. This is to smooth out the gradients. And we have been doing this in the previous slide also. So you want the depth map that are coming out to be smooth. And what is this L here indexing? It's indexing over different image scales. So this is, um, you're looking at your scene at different resolutions. Okay, so far so good. And in terms of predictions, this is your input. This is the ground truth. Uh, I again, we covered it. For that, you knew the ground truth. This was supervised. And this one is unsupervised. And it's detecting this pole better, some of the cars better, and so on. Any questions about this one? Okay, perfect. 